Assalamu alaikum. Get to know your Lord. First part of the Right Belief series by Sheikh Karim Abu Zaid. This dynamic literary work of art's main goal is to revive an understanding the names and attributes of Allah. In understanding the name and attributes of Allah will elevate our faith strengthening us and keep us steadfast. This wonderful book is now available in an audiobook format and can be found free of charge on YouTube channel Karim Abu Zaid. Get to know your Lord. You have nothing to lose. It's a place where it will thrive. You will make it through. You will make it through. The fifth is awakening you. With Quran and Sunnah on his side, here's a place where it will thrive. You will make it through. With Quran and Sunnah on his side, here's a place where it will thrive. You will make it through. Okay, everybody. Ina alhamdulillah. Wassalamu wa salam alaikum wa rasulullah. Before I begin, I want to apologize for being late. And I also want to make a couple of updates, guys. Um, should I forget, you know, uh, later. Uh, the class tonight with Dr. Jamali at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time is going to be canceled, but I will do uh, a, a, my series on the sacred bond. So at 9.30 Eastern Standard Time, I will uh, do the class on marriage. I'll do it today and tomorrow. I, yeah, I know it's normally just on Sundays, but I'll do it uh, tomorrow too, uh, today and tomorrow. So at 9.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time will be the sacred bonds of marriage. And also tomorrow's class with uh, uh, Brother Mukhtar. Mukhtar, inshallah, will begin the series on uh, the life of Khalid bin Walid the life of Khalid bin Walid, but he'll begin next week, not tomorrow, next week. So his class it will begin next week, but tomorrow we will have my classes. And tonight at 9.30, we will have my class on uh, the sacred bonds of marriage, okay? So just wanted to update everybody on that. And let's get started right now on this class. This is our class, Diluting Wella well better. We've been speaking about how as Muslims, every day of our life will be spent proving our allegiance to Allah, proving our allegiance to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, proving that our allegiance is truly to Islam, or we're going to be spending it showing that it isn't. I want to remind everyone that Allah tells us in the Quran that the unbelievers, they will never be our friends. They will never be our supporters. They will never accept us. This is why we don't vote in Kafir presidential elections. Oh yeah, I heard about what happened. We were talking about it. <laughs> Trump got popped in his ear. <laughs> and it's, he, he almost lost his toupee, but he's okay. <laughs> but anyway, <laughs> no Muslim in America should be, should be participating in no presidential election. Y'all know that because Allah tells you that they can never, the non-Muslims can never be rulers, guardians over us, and it will never be in their interest to do anything for us. Okay, so forget that. For those Muslims that don't understand why we don't vote, for those Muslims who don't understand why in Islam, 
We live amongst the non-believers in peace, but we distance ourselves. We're respectful around them. We don't go around starting fights with them, but we there's a separation between us and them. They can never be close friends to us, okay? Because their lifestyle is not the same as, as ours. There's a separation. We have to know when to hold and know when to fold, like Willie Nelson said. Or is it Chris Christopherson? Whatever the name man was. We got to know when to hold him. Gambler, know when to fold him. Ask Trump <laughs> about his ear. <laughs> I'm sorry, guys. We just saw that video. That man is hilarious. <laughs> you can tell he's from out of Hollywood. Did y'all see that hair? <laughs> anyway. But uh, subhanAllah, guys, you know, we stand up for what is good. We distance ourselves from that which is evil. Our allegiance is not to anyone except Allah, the Prophet Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, this religion and the Muslims, period. That's it. And we've been speaking about how even though we live in a non-Islamic environment, we live here, we respect the laws of the land. I even put a short out. We respect the laws of the land. We don't go around violating the laws. We don't go around breaking the laws. We don't go around hurting the people. We get along with the people. We respect the fact that Allah is the one that willed for us to be the minority and not the majority. I respect that. I respect the fact that the Christians will always be the majority over us. That's the will of Allah. I respect the fact that Allah willed for us to have to get along with the non-Muslims. I respect that. But do I try to conform to the lifestyle of the unbeliever? By the way, guys, there's the, um, hold on, my little nukers here. Give me a minute, y'all. He can really try to take me out again. Y'all see the lag? Hold on. All right. Yeah, he's in there. We respect the uh, the fact that it's Allah willed for us to have to live amongst them. And that Allah set the laws in effect for us, the Ten Commandments. Those Ten Commandments are the laws that we abide by, no matter where we are in this earth. Thou shalt not lie, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not fornicate, adulterate, thou shalt not, you know, oppress your pain, all of that. Those Ten Commandments are the laws we live by, and we respect the laws of whatever country we live in, but we do not submerge into their laws, meaning become like them. And that's what we're going to be speaking about today. Today, we're going to speak about how to maintain my Muslim identity. I see you, dude. How we, I got him, y'all. I got him. I'm tracking you now. I got you, bro. Birmingham, United Kingdom. Again, same. <laughs> it's the same dude. Well, okay, we're going to speak today about how to live amongst the non Muslims and maintain our identity. Okay, let me put the PowerPoint on. Yeah, so I can, yeah, just give me a second, guys. I'm gonna take the screen dark here for a minute. Okay, hold on. And by the way, guys, we're desperately in need of donations to support this Dawa effort. This is the middle of the month. And we still have uh, X, uh, bills getting ready to come out. Please support us. You can cash app us at, at the ticker. Look at the ticker down there, Sooner followers. You can Zelle us, PayPal us. Please support us. I haven't checked our account today or yesterday or the day before. So I hope we're not overdrawn, but I'll check it later. Please support this Dow effort. Okay, so let me turn the camera off just for a minute. Today we're covering pages. Wait a minute. Four, 408 through 410 of the book. 
and we're going to speak about how to live amongst the non-Muslims and build bridges with them without compromising our Islamic in, in integrity or dignity or identity, which is what so many Muslims have lost today. We've lost that in Islamic integrity. We've lost our Islamic dignity, that dignity, integrity that the companions had. Back in the sixth, seventh century, we've lost that. Okay. How can we reclaim it? Well, we're going to speak about how to build bridges with the non Muslims and also the importance of the Muslim family. So let's look at the PowerPoint here. Okay. For us Muslims who live in a diverse society such as America, we have no choice but to try to establish some type of mutual understanding amongst the people that we're we're living in this society with. So a lot of Muslims will come to me and ask me, Sister Layla, my Islamic community, they want to uh, get active in you know uh, with charity. Can we do charitable activities with the non-Muslims? Yes, we can do that. Uh, can we actively participate in uh, food banks and things like that? Yes, we can. I want to share uh, 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 this uh, hadith with you guys. The Prophet وسلم, said, a person will never enter paradise whose neighbors are afraid of you, whose neighbors fear your harm. So for those of us Muslims, we want to let the people around us know that there is no reason, you know, to be afraid because you got a, a Muslim woman here who covers up and wears niqab. There is no reason to be afraid because, you know, I'm different. You want to show through your behavior, show through your mannerisms. You know that we're kind people, we're compassionate people, we are people of peace. And here this hadith shows that. The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam tells us that we should be mindful of our neighbor's well-being. We should be mindful and respectable of our neighbors. I don't want to blend in to, with them. I don't want to participate in their gatherings or functions but I want them to see that I'm a good person. And as we talked about the other day, the constitution of Medina that the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam put into effect is more proof, more proof, you know, how he, he emphasized to us the importance of getting along, getting along with the non-Muslims, living with them in peace. So things that we can do, we can participate in neighborhood food banks we can participate you know in at schools you want to a volunteer for the pta volunteer for the school drive we can organize book drives we can even uh conduct free courses you know to uplift the community about us as we talked about yesterday you know uh if they're having a meet and greet for the neighbors a neighborhood meet and greet. We can participate and speak about us and our lifestyle and our belief system. So we want to try to live amongst the non-Muslims and put their fears to rest because shaitan is going to make them want to question us. But we show them through our behavior that shaitan is just shaitan, that we're not what they think. Okay? And again, as we talked about yesterday, that means we have to learn our religion. We have to learn our religion correctly. We need to know what the lawful things are, the unlawful things are. We have to educate ourselves and our children about well, well, better allegiance. Most Muslims on earth today don't understand that. Even the Arabs, even the Arabs don't understand well, well, better. They fear the non-believers to the point that they praise them. Remember the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, don't give titles. Don't give titles of respect and honor 
to the non-Muslims because if they were deserving of those titles of respect and honor, they would believe la Allah. Okay, so, you know, the Arabs even struggle with that. They don't know where to draw the line. We don't sit around praising people like Darwin. We don't sit around praising people like Aristotle. Aristotle was, you know, a homosexual. He didn't believe in Allah. Darwin was barbaric. He didn't believe in Allah. Einstein, these Sigmund Freud, these people didn't believe in Allah. So why would we give them titles of respect and honor that are only deserving to those who do believe in Allah? As our prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said. So we have to learn, you know, where to draw the line. I respect you because you are my neighbor. But do I go around glorifying you, praising you, trying to blend in and be with you on that level? No. Allah says, do not take them as your close friends. Do not take them as your intimate partners and friends and supporters and helpers. I'm going to draw the line here. I'll look out for your house when you're not here. I'll make sure that no one's breaking in your house. I'll do all that. I'll be kind and neighborly. I'll even share my food with you if you need some help. You know, financially, if I can help you, I'll do that too. But I'm going to draw the line here. You're still not on my level. We're still not the same. We're still not the same. My allegiance is not to you. I'm not going to glorify you. I'm not going to put you up on a status that you're not deserving of. Does everybody understand that? This is well and well better. And most Muslims today don't understand that concept. So we have to educate ourselves about our religion first and foremost. Learn the religion ourselves first and foremost, and then teach it to our children and then share it with the people in our community. And nowadays, the masajids, the masjids, they can have days uh, in which the non-Muslims can come to learn. Most masjids today do that. They'll have open masjid days. And they'll have community events, you know, that the non-Muslims can come to, to ask questions and learn about the religion. Okay? So, you know, we can do that. We can engage with the community. We can educationally outreach to them. Okay? But again, we don't blend in with them. Don't blur the lines. Don't blur the lines. Understand your place. Understand their place and don't transgress it. But unfortunately, Muslims today have transgressed it. So that's what I want to speak about, about the importance, you know, of uh, balancing uh, our identity within a non-Muslim community. And now I want to go back to reinforcing the concept of the Muslim family. The Muslim family is everything. The Muslim family is a beacon of inspiration and unity. And in these days and times, you know, our faith can be very challenging for us. But Islam offers a unique and well-defined approach to family life. And the way that Allah approaches it will serve as a source of inspiration not only for the family of the Muslim, but also for the non-Muslim communities as well. Because the Muslim family is grounded in Allah's laws. We put Allah's laws, Allah's principles over man. And because of that, this will become a beacon of light for the non-Muslims. Remember, the Ten Commandments is a part of every religious person's belief. But how many people live up to it? Do the Christians honor thou shalt not commit fornication? They don't honor that. Do the Jews honor thou shalt not do intoxicants? No. But we Muslims, we honor those Ten Commandments. You know, our life is grounded upon Allah's principles. So not only will we be an inspiration and motivate each other, but also the non-Muslims will look at us and say, wow, you know, uh, this is what uh, makes them different than us. They really are upholding their Lord's commands. 
they really are answering to a higher power, a higher authority. And that's why, guys, it's important for us Muslims that when we do decide to get married, and I always tell you sisters this, you have to follow the laws of Allah. Don't try to be like the Kafirs and use a dating app. Don't try to be like the Kafirs and go out and look for your own man. You have to follow the laws of Islam. Have your guardian look for you a husband. If it doesn't start off right, what makes you think it's going to be a success? Listen to what Allah says in the interpretation, the meaning. And those who say, our Lord, grant us from amongst our wives and children comfort to our eyes and make us an example for others who are righteous. Again, the family is everything with us. This verse here shows that. This verse shows that we as Muslims are supposed to lead by our example. The fact that we base our behavior, we base our choices, we base our actions in life on Allah's laws and his commands will be an example for the non-believers. Also, Allah tells us in another verse, and the interpretation of meaning among his signs is this. He created for you mates from amongst yourselves so you can live in peace with them. And he's put love and kindness between you. How many of you hear your neighbors talk about, wow, did y'all see what happened at Betsy last night? Her husband, Jim, came home at three in the morning drunk and he broke the window out and they were arguing and screaming and cursing. The kids were crying. You know, we don't behave like that. As Muslims, we know that Allah created us with a purpose. And Allah gave us all our roles and our rights and our responsibilities. So we live together as husband and wife, respecting each other, giving each other their rights, respecting our children, giving them their rights. And we live in peace with each other. And when uh, the outside world looks at us, they see love. They see kindness. They don't see that drama of getting drunk and he cheated on me and all that nonsense. We're supposed to be an example. Remember, Allah made us witnesses. We talked about that. Allah made us witnesses over the other people. Subhana Allah. And our prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is the role model for us. He's supposed to be your role model. Not Obama, not Einstein, not Sigmund Freud, not Darwin. The non-believers can never be role models for us. Like the prophet said, how can they be a role model for anyone when they don't even believe in Allah? How, why would you take a person that doesn't believe in Allah as a role model? Our prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he's the role model for the Muslim. And he taught us how to live in peace and harmony within the home, Subhana Allah. And again, Islam gives us all our rights and our roles and obligations. Allah says in the interpretation of the meaning, oh, you who believe, save yourself and your families from a fire who is, that is fueled by men and stones. This is what separates the Muslim from the non-Muslim within the community. The non-Muslims, they don't answer to a higher authority. They don't answer to a higher being. They just live the life of this world. This world is their paradise. They do what feels good to them. We're different. We have laws. We have rules. We have guidelines to abide by. And the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam taught us that the family is the core of everything. We have to be merciful to our wives. We have to be merciful to our children. We have to respect our elders. We have to be kind to the wayfarer and the needy. Listen to what the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said. He said, he is not one of us 
who is not merciful to our young, nor respecting of the rights of our elders, nor who enjoins good and forbids evil. So here we can see another example of a law telling us what our roles are within the family, what our roles are with each other. And again, Islam uh, encourages knowledge. Allah hates ignorance. That's why the Prophet Wasallam said, seeking knowledge is an obligation upon every Muslim, male, female, young and old. So this is what separates our family from the non-Muslim family within, the, within our uh, society and our communities. We answer to Allah. We live each day of our life trying to seek his, his glory, his pleasure, not the glory and pleasure of man. We don't have it twisted as Muslims. We are a people of balance. We respect, we are respectful, but we're not compromising. It's a difference. I respect you for your beliefs, but I'm not going to compromise mine for yours. So the Muslim family is anchored in the teachings of Allah and Allah's teachings acts as a guiding light for us and brings about values that will help us to succeed in this world and in the next. And those rules and obligations and values also teach us how to get along and live in a world where we're surrounded with people who are not like us.